Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates here on Racing America. In this episode, we only had six drivers that competed over the Easter weekend. We'll check in with two of the Race Face drivers, seeing plenty of action in Nashville, Tennessee area, some dirt racing in Missouri, Texas, and Georgia, quarter midgets at the Clash in North Carolina, and much, much more. So let's get right to the results. Jake Bowman made the trip from California to Tennessee to run his legend car at Highland Rim where he had three races over two days. It was then on to Nashville Fairground Speedway for the 100 lap pro late model race in his number 25 Rackley War entry. Jake qualified fourth, started seventh with the invert and quickly moved into the top five and was running fourth on lap 41 before something caused the car to snap around and eventually ended his day. We caught up with Jake back in California for his take on the weekend. Hey guys, Jake Bowman here. Um, got, just got home last night from Nashville for my week long trip. Um, it was a pretty good week. I mean, we had the top three legend car all week for the spring nationals. So I was really happy about the legend car stuff and then Moved on to the prolate stuff at Nashville Fairground Speedway, and we qualified fourth out of 30 cars and drew a seven, and we f didn't finish the race because of a clutch problem, but um, we'll be better next race, and we definitely had a winning car, so I hope to bring the winning car back next race and hope to get it done. Thank you. Up next for Jake in the prolate model, back to Nashville on May 7th. Caden Honeycutt pulled double duty over the weekend, first in his dirt factory stock at Heart of Texas Speedway, and then on Saturday, he was scheduled to run a second race at Kennendale Speedway Park, but got a call from Jet Motorsports to drive their 604 dirt late model in the $10,000 to win race at Golden Isle Speedway. Caden is always ready to chase money, so he made a fast dash to Georgia would that change in plans be worth it? Here is a weekend recap from the driver. Hey everybody, it's Ken Honeycutt here. We just got done over the weekend. Uh, had an amazing Saturday night race uh, in the Great Lake Model for Jim Motorsports. But first, we uh, ran the factory stock, tried to go for eight in a row on Friday night. Uh, unfortunately, it just didn't work out for us. Uh, we got to the lead early, got called back on a restart. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure why on that, but uh, Took all the laps to get it back up there, but we got there and unfortunately we just got a, a huge mess right at the end of the race. Um, so it is what it is on that horrible way to win the, uh, lose a win streak, but uh, Saturday night was completely worth it. I went to Golden Isle Speedway, got the call from Jet Motorsports to go run uh, the 604 crate late model for $10,000 from win. And uh, we qualified eighth in qualifying, uh, won our heat race uh, against the great USA champion, actually, Jimmy Thomas, that was actually cool. And uh, we went on to win the race uh, in, in the 60 lap feature. We, Mark Widener, and uh, all those big, big, big time guys. And uh, man, that was just an awesome feeling. Um, best win of my dirt career. And I would say even tops one of my best wins of my career in asphalt and everything, period. So um, just an amazing win. I appreciate everybody, all my sponsors, my mom and dad, uh, Rod at Race Face. Uh, friends at Jacqueline, um, everybody that supports me on my birth, uh, dirt side, Melvin Kim, Kim Motorsports, Renee, Kenny Merritt, uh, Urane Race Fuels, uh, Jack Jenkins, um, Signature Diesel, just man, everybody that helps me. Uh, we're just going to go down and this weekend, we'll be back at Goodyear All-American Speedway in the car store and our number 12 side right here, Chevy. So uh, we're going to see if we can try to click off and win on asphalt. So um, tune in to you guys at uh, 8 o'clock at uh, Saturday night. I guess we know who's buying dinner this weekend as he returns to the Cars Tour at Goodyear All-American Speedway on Saturday. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to find out if Jade Adavadesian could outrun the Midwest thunderstorms at I-55 Raceway in Peebley, Missouri. So stay tuned for more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Cole Denton, and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Welcome back. Lucas Oil Power National Midget Driver Jade Avedesian made her another trip to the Midwest, this time 
to Federated Auto Parts Raceway at I-55 in Peebley, Missouri. Anytime you visit the Midwest in April or May, you have to outrun the weather. Unfortunately, Jade was not able to do that on Friday, and yes, you guessed it, the race was rained out. On Saturday, 31 of the country's top Power Eye National Midget Racers were on hand for the event. Jade finished sixth in her heat race, 12th in the B main, but was not able to transfer to the A main. Up next for Jade, Port City Raceway in Tulsa, Oklahoma on April 22nd and 23rd. Let's learn a little bit more about the Clovis, California Dirt Racer as we look back on an interview from earlier this month on Racing America's Bull Ring and the Who's Next segment with Anthony Alfredo. Back here on the Bull Ring this afternoon presented by 5150. You know, here on Racing America, we love showcasing young talent. We've had Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Harrison Burton, just a few of the drivers that we've watched grow and end up in the NASCAR Cup Series. Well, our friends at Race Face Driver Development do it better than anyone else. Today, we're going to check in again with Anthony Alfredo and see who's next. Hey, this is Anthony Alfredo, and welcome to a new episode of Who's Next. Today, we head to Clovis, California to meet Jade Avedizian, who is a dirt racer for CB Industries owned by Chad Boat. She's only 15 years old, driving the number 14 car. Jade, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on. It's great to have you. We appreciate your time. How old were you actually when you first started racing? And tell us a little bit about that start. Yes. Yeah, so I was seven years old and I started in quarter midgets and then did the quarter midgets and then junior sprints, micros, and now midgets. Can you tell us about what it looked like for you as a driver to win three championships in just one year, especially when you first started racing? What did that all entail? Yeah, that was that was a very cool uh, year for sure. So my dad always thought it was very important for us to like, even when I was that young, travel and uh, see new tracks, meet new people, race against different people. And we're still doing that, obviously. But yeah, that year was really cool. We got the first one and then the second one and then ended up winning the th uh, last one, which was the third one. Well, that's definitely exciting. How many races did you actually run that year? Uh, about 60 races that year. That's unbelievable. So that's a yeah. lot of races, right? Double to what we're used to on the on the National Circuit NASCAR side of things. I know a lot of dirt racers who run so much. Well, in 2019, you had some major wins across the country. What made that year so special? Yeah, that year was also a really cool year. So we started off with California Speed Week, got a night off, uh, picked a night off that for the win, and then feel like we kind of just started getting our momentum, won a few local shows, and then we went to Clay Cup, picked up that win, and then it was like, oh, it's um, Mark Gilpie and Memorial time. So went out there, picked up that win, and then the end of that, or the end of that year going into 20, 2020, I picked up the shootout, which was like another awesome year too. Yeah, so not only an incredible season in 2019, but in 2020, you mentioned the Tulsa shootout, the restricted championship that has to be a, a huge win, an amazing feeling. What exactly uh, did that mean to you, your your family, supporters, and your sponsors? Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, that week is very long, could be overwhelming at some point, but just because how many cars, how many people, but you just got to act like it's another race and started, I think I started fifth and then started picking them off. And yeah, it was awesome though, <laughs> overall. So I'm not even a dirt racer necessarily or didn't come from a dirt racing background. I know that every dirt racer wants to win the Tulsa shootout and there are an absolutely incredible amount of cars there. So do you remember how many were there and what it was like competing in that event at the expo center? Yeah, I don't exactly remember, but I would say around 1500 or so. That is absolutely unbelievable to even think about to narrow it down to uh, you know, the final A main and, and be able to be a winner. And that is a huge accomplishment. Uh, you also con contended and won the Lucas Oil Now uh, 600 National Championship in the restricted A class. Uh, so that was a big accomplishment. Tell us about that. And then now kind of shift gears to what's ahead in 2022. 
Yeah, so uh, 2020, it's kind of when started COVID hitting. So all the California tracks got shut down and we were, we were already back there and we were like, and we were at the airport, we were actually flying home and my mom was like, well, they're shutting down everything. So we made like a last minute decision before we went on the flight. Let's just leave everything there for the rest of the year and just race what they have. So we got, we did the now 600 thing and those, those races in that year was awesome too. A lot of races, a lot of traveling, but I'm glad we ended up staying there instead of coming home and just sitting around basically because it was all closed. But yeah, that year was cool. And then um, this year, 2022, uh, focusing on the midget uh, basically the whole year. Um, just our goal, I'm with CB Industries again this year, and our goal is to just try to pick off a few wins this year. That's awesome. Well, it's definitely great, especially during that 2020 year, to stay busy and be able to race a lot and now focus on 2022 here a couple of years later. But that being said, a lot of dirt racing talk, a lot of wins, a lot of accomplishments, but do you see a pavement transition in the near future with the stock car industry? Yeah, that's where I really want to end up. So if I get the opportunity, awesome. I'm definitely going to take it. Well, thank you again, Jade, for coming on the show. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for another episode of Who's Next. I'm Anthony Alfredo, and I'll see you next time. I think you're going to be hearing a lot more from this young lady as the season progresses. And keep in mind, the Power Eye National Midget Series is one of the toughest series in the country as far as competition is concerned. We're going to take another short commercial break, and when we return, we'll catch up with Cole Denton, who was competing at the INEX Spring Nationals at both Highland Rim and Nashville Fairground Speedway. Can the young bandolero phenom keep up his dominance? We'll find out when we return with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Grant Thompson, and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Welcome back. Cole Denton made the trip to Nashville, Tennessee to compete in the INEX Nashville Spring Nationals at both Veterans Highland Rim Speedway and Nashville Fairground Speedway for six races in four days. We start at the rim, where he finished with two wins and a second. Let's check in with Cole for updates on that race. Hey race fans, it's Colden. Today we're at Highland Rim for round one of the Nashville Spring Series. I qualified pole and on the start I got very, very loose and fell back to third. I was hanging on for third and I started, my car started to come in and I started catching the leaders. I finally got by second and we were side by side and a caution came out right after we crossed the uh, start finish line. And I started in second on the restart with 10 laps to go and drove on the outside and passed for the lead and led the rest of the race, taking my number 46 INX Bandolera into victory lane. I want to thank my mom and dad, Bacon Racing, my grandparents, Race Face Brand Development, Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, and by the way everyone, today I was singing sign. We now move on to Nashville Fairground Speedway where Cole made his debut at the track. In race one, he finished second in race two, he brought home a third place finish, and in the final race, all Cole needed to do was finish fifth or better to secure the championship. Let's catch up with Cole for the results. Hey race fans, it's Cole Denton. Today we're at Nashville Fairground Speedway for round six of the Nashville Spring Series. I qualified fourth, and on the start I passed for third, and a few laps later I ran down the leaders and passed for second, and then a few laps later, I passed for first. And then I got passed back, and I crossed them off of turn four, parking my number 46 INX Bandolera into victory lane. And I won the Nashville Spring Series Championship. I want to thank my mom and dad, Bacon Racing, my grandparents, Race Face Advancement, Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, and most importantly, God. And today, guys, I was singing Slow Ride. Now that's how you win a championship. Up next for Cole, Chris Motorsports Park on April 23rd. It's now time for this week's Track Facts with Cassidy Hines. What's up guys? 
Colorado National Speedway is a 3 8 mile track located in Decono, Colorado. Some divisions that race there are the Super Late Models, Pro Trucks, Legends, Pier Stocks, and many others. A big event that happens every year is the Challenge Cup. The Challenge Cup is where drivers can race for larger payouts, which is really fun. My personal experience with the track is that I've raced a pro truck there for three years. I've had four wins in the pro trucks, um, a quick time in the pro trucks. I've gotten, I've swept the night once with two wins and the quick time. I've gotten a win in the Legends car and I'm going to be racing my super late model there, which I'm really excited for. That's all for this week's Track Facts. We're headed for our last commercial break, and when we come back, we'll catch up with Race Face Next drivers, Carter Whalen and Landon Cox, who made the trip to North Carolina for the Carolina Clash. We'll be right back with more Race Face driver updates right here on Racing America. Hey everybody, this is Anthony Alfredo, and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates here on Racing America. Welcome back. Carter Whalen was at North Carolina QMA for the Carolina Clash. We check in with Carter right after the first practice. Carter Whalen here just got finished practicing here for the Carolina Clash and NCQMA. All the cars are pretty good. We're going to make some minor adjustments. About to go out for heats in a couple hours, I believe. Uh, stay tuned for more updates. Carter was correct. His cars were fast as he qualified his heavy Honda and heavy 160 directly into the A mains, but had to run the B main in his heavy World Formula. We were able to catch up with Carter after the World Formula B main. Just got finished with the World with the B main here, NCQMA for the Carolina Clash. Started P1, finished P2. Gonna make some minor adjustments on the car and go out for the A mains after this 45 minute break. The rain has gone away hopefully for the rest of the day. The sun was just out. Wish us luck. It was now time for the A mains in all three classes. Who better to give us an update than the driver? Carter Whalen here. We just got back from the Carolina Clash at NCQMA. We finished third in Heavy Honda after battling with a couple of national championships. Super happy with that. In Heavy 160, we did not do too well. I ended up DNFing, but in Heavy World Formula, after coming from the B main, I made my way all the way up to second. Then with four to go, I got tangled in a racing incident. Unfortunate way to end the night, but really happy with our podium, especially with all these national champions at the race. Can't thank everybody allowed, that allows me to go to these big races, especially Danny Cox and the entire Cox family, Mark Tuggle RV, Conquest Strategic Marketing, A1 Auto Course, and Ultimate QM. I think the young 12-year-old coming Georgia driver did pretty well overall, and is definitely becoming a video star. Up next for Carter, it looks like a schedule change has them going to Metro Atlanta QMA for the Dixie Shootout Series. If not, then they're off to Austin, Texas for the Central Region National event at the end of the month. Landon Cox was also at the Clash competing in both the Junior Honda and Junior 160 class. In the Junior Honda class, the team struggled with engine issues early and had to work their way through the D main to the C main while they had the fastest car in the field, but the race timed out due to the number of cautions. Now for viewers that don't know about quarter midget racing, races are scheduled for a certain number of laps or a set time period to decide the race results. Now on to the Junior 160 A main where Landon finished fifth. Up next for Landon, shootout at Metro Atlanta QMA on May 1st. If not, then he's off to Austin, Texas as well. Other race face drivers seeing action this weekend include Anthony Alfredo, who will be at Talladega Super Speedway in his number 23 Dude Wipe Chevy Camaro with our motorsports. Sheldon Creed will also be at the high speed high banks of Talladega in his number two Whelan Richard Childress Chevrolet. Connor Mozak will be back in his Scott Legacy Racing Chevy Camaro in the Trans Am TA2 Series at WeatherTech Laguna Seca 
on April 24th. Joey East will return to the Arkham Menards West Series with Nate Clower Motorsports at Kern County Raceway on April 23rd. Cassidy Hines will also be at Kern County Raceway on Saturday in her number 88 Friends of Jacqueline Pro Late Model. Hudson Bolger will be in his number 17 Can-Am Byron Power Sports Young Lions Legend Car at Chris Motorsports Park on the 22nd and 23rd. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.